My name is Jeannie Link. My title is Professor of Diagnostic Radiology and Biomedical Engineering, but I'm the director of the Radiochemical, Radiochemistry Research Center here, and I work at Oregon Health and Science University. Radioactivity is the emission or the emissions from an unstable nucleus but it comes from a nucleus that uh, has essentially the wrong binding energy. It's too energetic and so it has usually too many neutrons or too many protons and so radioactivity is what comes out when it readjusts to a lower energy to become more stable. Inside the nucleus there are other forces that are active and there are two other, there are three forces active within the nucleus and one's the weak force and that affects bosons. And one is the strong force. And the strong force is what holds the nucleons together. And the nucleons in the, um, in the nucleus are the neutrons and the protons. And those are made up of quarks. And the actual action of the strong force involves the individual quarks as it changes. But the strong force is a force that only has a very short range and that range is about the size of a nucleus, about 10 to the minus 15 meters. And so that strong force holds them together. But it has such a short range that of uh, strength that as you, these particles become energetic, they're moving, they're spinning, uh, the nucleons that it actually the nucleus becomes unstable. You have an energy uh, that's too much in the nucleus if the neutrons and protons are in balance because in the nucleus we're conserving all kinds of things. We're conserving momentum, we're conserving charge, we're conserving spin, but when there's too much energy what happens is the nucleons change to lose energy. And so what we think about usually in nuclear radiochemistry or radiochemistry is that we have a table of the nuclides. Chemists are used to working with a periodic table. We almost never work with a periodic table. We work with a chart of the nuclides, which is a chart that has neutrons on one axis and protons on the other. And the line of stability where the nuclei are centered is pretty much balanced between neutrons and protons. It, it's not totally, as you get higher and higher energies, we mean a little more neutrons, a few more neutrons to achieve stability in the nucleus. And so we use the chart of the nuclides. And when you look at the chart of the nuclides, people have spent lifetimes figuring out what nuclei are stable or not stable. But with the chart of the nuclides, what you see is as a nucleus becomes more and more stable, it doesn't last as long. And that's called the half-life. The half-life is actually a measured uh, property of a given radionuclide. And there's, when I talk about radionuclides, I talk about atoms that are not stable. But there are different kinds of radionuclides. People talk about isotopes. Isotopes are all the ones with the same proton number. So that'd be like carbon-12, carbon-13, carbon-14, carbon-11, and um, they all have different half-lives because they're further from the line of stability. So carbon-11 has a 20-minute half-life. Carbon-12 is stable, and it's got six protons, six neutrons, totally balanced. Carbon-13 is stable. Carbon-14 isn't stable, but because it has more neutrons, it's more stable than carbon-11, and it's got thousands of years of a half-life. The half-life is uh, governed by how fast it decays, and it decays by e to the minus lambda t, and lambda is equal to the log of two, natural log of two over the half-life. So with, when a nucleus decays, there are different methods of it decaying. It can actually decay just by emitting uh, energy and not a particle, and that's called isomeric transition, where we go from a higher nuclear energy to a lower nuclear energy state. But it can also emit particles, and one of the biggest particles that's emitted is an alpha particle, and an alpha particle is a very stable particle. It's a helium nucleus, helium nucleus, and with a helium nucleus, there are two protons and two neutrons, and because of that, they're very balanced, and when you look at the energies of that nucleus and the binding energies, it's a very strong particle. 
The other kinds of emissions are beta, which is giving off electrons, or uh, protons, or neutrons. A neutron is a particle that has no charge, but it has a mass of one, atomic mass of one. A proton has a positive charge and a mass of one. With a positron, it's very different. A positron is antimatter, and so it can't exist in matter very long. So when it's ejected, the positive electron comes out of a nucleus. What happens is it goes a small amount of distance interacting with matter till it slows down enough that it can interact with an electron. When it interacts, and it can travel depending on its energy a couple millimeters in, in air or tissue, and what happens is the positron and the electron are matter and antimatter. They can't coexist. They come together, they interact, and they get annihilation. You follow E equals mc squared. And because the rest mass of an electron is about 511,000 electron volts, 511 keV, what happens then is you get two 511 keV gamma rays. And those gamma rays, or those uh, electromagnetic radiation, come off almost exactly 180 degrees to each other. They, it's not perfect because there's a little conservation of momentum that has to happen in there, but it's close to 180 degrees of distance or of angle for these particles coming out.